If you saw the previous tutorial, you would have seen that we've got a plain text file called names, where we've added some data to it. Each name is on a separate line here. Now I've got some things set up um, so far. And the new thing is this stream reader object. Think of stream reader here as a fancy kind of data type. It's known as a class, and this is something that Microsoft have already written for us. We don't see the code for it, we just need to know how to use it. And we're going to use an object of this class that I've called SR here, short for stream reader. But we could call it whatever we wanted. Think of it like a variable name. Um, we're going to use this as a tool to read data or get data from that text file names.txt into our C Sharp program. In this example, we're going to get those names one name at a time and store them in an array. So with my tool SR, I'm also creating a connection to the text file in question. Now I just need to write the name of the text file there. I don't need to include the path to the text file because over here in the Explorer panel, you can see names.txt is stored in the same directory or folder as the rest of my project files, in particular program.cs here where our code is. If I have the text file stored in another location somewhere on my computer, I would actually have to include the entire path to that file. Now I've got a regular string variable, one name, that I'm going to use to store each name as we read it from the text file, because here we are reading line by line. I've got the array that I'm going to store the data in, because why not? And because I'm going to use a condition controlled loop for reading the data rather than a count controlled for loop, I need to declare my index variable and set that to zero, which equates to the first index of the array. So turning the tap on part of the analogy is create our stream reader object and connect to the text file that we want to work with. As soon as that connection is made, that text file is now open for reading. To let the water flow, I'm doing the actual reading. So I'm going to use a while loop for this. We set that up like that. And I'm going to have two things happening inside my while loop. I'm going to have one thing that happens inside that nested set of parentheses. And I'm going to check that that is not null. So what am I checking? I'm actually going to attempt to read the first line from the text file. So into one name, I'm going to assign my stream reader tool dot read line. It's a little bit like reading from the console window, the terminal window, but I'm reading from a text file. So what this does is sr.readline attempts to read a line from the text file and it will start with line one and every time we come across it it'll go to line two then line three line four and so forth now if that attempt produces null that means our text file is empty and so the loop won't run there's nothing to read but if we have managed to grab some data at sr.readline and assign that to one name then one name is not going to be null. It's not going to be void of any value. So we can continue in this loop. So I said I wanted to put each value into an array. So I'm going to go names, the current index. That's why I've initialized it to zero earlier on. That's going to be assigned that name that we just read and confirmed we did actually get some data. Uh, now, just to prove that we've got that data, I don't have to do this, but because I can, I'm going to output that name that I just added to the array. And then finally, because this is a condition controlled loop, I need to increment our array index, otherwise we're just going to be overwriting index zero each time. 
So turn the tap on, make a connection to the stream reader object and open it for reading. Let the water flow using a condition controlled loop because we don't necessarily know how many lines are going to be in the text file. We want to read data from the text file into an array. Now what I am missing here in my code is checking to see do I have space in the array, but that can come at a later point in time. I'm just going to assume here that I'm not going to have so many names in my text file that I will fill up my array. Now finally the turn the tap off analogy part of it is we take our stream reader object and we go sr.dispose. That will destroy this tool. We no longer need the stream reader object once we've got all the data and it's going to release that area of memory that contained the SR object to the rest of my computer system. If I don't do this, I'm going to have what we call a memory leak and potentially my computer could crash as a result. Now, we're nearly there. If I just go control S to save, then bring up a terminal window and type .NET run we should see those four names from the text file appear in our, on our screen. Now don't worry about this possible null value thing. This is what the brown squiggly line meant. But I can ignore it for now because I've got all four names from the text file into my program via an array by using the stream reader object.